about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Say unto God. Uh huh. Read on. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to thee. Not through the greatness of grammar. Not through English and negotiation. On the strength of the excellency of your power. Listen, let me tell you something. You are liable for oppression the moment you find yourself here. Unfortunately, it is not given to you to choose to arrive here. Are we together? The moment you are born, there are children who from birth, they are already born with all kinds of sicknesses. Are we together? They never chose it. It's the reality. Listen, let me tell you. The moment you cross the second heavens, the domain of evil can find expression. The heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, the Bible says. But from the second heavens, demonic activities are authorized to find expression. Down till under the earth. That's what happens to children. The moment, it's not a man and a woman that produces children. They just create the body for the child to come. But the moment that child arrives, right from the interface of the second heavens, war begins over the destiny of the child. It's left for the father and the mother to be spiritual enough to secure the destiny of the child. Or careless enough to allow anything to happen. Are we together? Yeah. That is why you hear that children are initiated from the womb. How can you initiate a child whose faculty of reasoning is not there? Are we together? Is it not in your Bible that John was filled with the Holy Ghost from the womb? How did he pray in tongues? How did he manifest that? Hallelujah. I want to show you four keys to accessing the anointing. This, this is... The place where I want us to be sensitive now. Because you are not only going to hear, you are going to receive. Amen. Hallelujah. Please believe me. You are not going to hear alone. You are going to receive. Amen. I enter the holy of holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. I enter the holy of holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. Holy Spirit, we wait on you. Holy Spirit, I wait on you. Holy Spirit. I wait on you for fire. 
can make tonight your night of encounter listen there was a time in my life the anointing was not upon me I was not born with it are we together a time can come and tonight can be that time if you believe but if you are careless Elijah said if you can see me was he blind it's a spiritual language. There is a measure of sensitivity it takes to truly grab the anointing. It's not about falling down. Look at me. It's not about falling down. It's about your spirit. Station. You are not just hearing. You are seeing what the Lord is saying. Let me tell you something. The difference between you and the next level of your life is the anointing. There is nothing that will cover for the absence of the anointing. I know it. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you were mighty on your throne. Just follow me, follow me. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you were mighty on your own. Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and weep, Kadosh, you were mighty on your own. Shalom, shalom, my father, shalom, shalom, you're welcome in this place, shalom. Jehovah, Baba Shakata Bayada, Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome in this place. sensitive what are the keys that have turned ordinary men to wonders workers of miracles what can a man do what is the secret that can open up this fountain in the spirit for no man is born with this thing hear me there is a key there are keys no man is born with unction Jesus himself what can make a man of God so powerful that your words 
can create an effect in the life of men. You are speaking from one end and someone outside is shaking like a leaf. What is the key? Please hear me. This is an office. I'm not speaking to you as a man. I can speak to you as a man who has researched this truth. But I speak to you as a custodian of the mystery of this thing. I may not show you, I may not boast that I know business principles. I may not boast that I know on leadership. But I can teach you the mysteries of the presence of God. For it is an office. It was given to me by Jesus Christ. The angels bow before him. The beautiful, beautiful. The heavens are not the door. The angels bow before you. You're beautiful. Yeah. You're beautiful. Just follow me tonight. Heaven and earth adore you. Angels bow before you. You're beautiful. Heavens and earth adore you. The angels bow before you. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Oh, 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 understand what I'm teaching you tonight and you will walk in a new dimension believe me understand what I'm teaching you tonight and your ministry will change like day and night understand what I'm teaching you tonight and you will become like a God upon the earth understand what I'm teaching you tonight and your ranking will change instantly in the spirit understand what I'm teaching you tonight and your life will become a wonder it's not by quoting scripture it's a realm you can stand in number one the first key to accessing the anointing is salvation don't trivialize it write it and take it as serious as anything there are many people in church who are not born again but they want power there are many pastors on the altar who are not born again but they want power you can fast as an unbeliever you will never find power you can be the PA of a man of God and not be born again please hear me that they ordain you does not mean you are born again. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Ah, I tell you, I sense fire in this place. That you were ordained, they poured oil on you, does not mean that you are born again. Let me tell you, we can do what we know to do on earth, but it depends on whether God approves of it or not. Ah, 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 ah. That's what I'm hearing in the spirit.
John chapter 1 verse 12 we have to hurry up because God will soon sit in this place the weight of his glory but as many as received him meaning not everybody will receive him as many as received him to them gave he what power the power is for those who receive him not those who are near him not those who go to where he is proximity to god is not salvation let me tell you the truth there are so many people who need to examine they are born again i am telling you this there are many people who are not born again are we together and i don't mean just by religious activities no an encounter with jesus christ no there are people who are not born again you will say this and many people will argue with you but the way the early church were born again when they were born again fire fell on them salvation the power to become is for those who receive for those who receive him they are the type god will back god does not back everybody just because jesus died for everybody does not mean you just speak and things happen you know it's and, and please if you're a pastor here hear me aside from the impartation you receive tonight open your eyes don't think it's just by wearing suit and holding a mic Oh, the power of God is here all these things we keep doing we fool ourselves nothing will cover for the absence of an encounter not suit not English not Greek and Hebrew there must be a track record in the secret place he said that which I tell you in the secret declare thou on the mountaintop you don't just come and stand and because they gave you a mic you expect things to happen no sir human beings are not robots are we together human beings are not idiots do you know the power it takes to lift a man off his seat? I don't mean physically alone. Track record. Salvation. Number two. The second key. Give us 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. The second key. Pay attention. To a rich, heavy deposit of the anointing upon your life that is undeniable is addiction and passion for God and his kingdom addiction passion I'll give you more than a song for a song in itself is that what you have required you search much deeper within to the way things are You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus There is no power for part-time Christianity there is no power for part-time addiction there is no power for part-time ministry so many pastors are part-time ministers by part-time I don't mean that you are doing another thing part-time with God and part-time with ambition looking for relevance joining all kinds of stupid associations to quickly rise the ladder of ministry no it is God that lifts men please hear me your addiction for God must supersede your addiction for money must supersede your addiction for church your addiction for Versace and boss and Gucci your addiction for cars and houses if you want God's power except if you want to go and see a herbalist but if you want the power that comes from heaven, it must match your level of addiction. You will never have more power beyond your addiction. No. Your addiction defines the flow of the anointing. How addicted are you to God as a person? Two, how addicted are you 
to his kingdom to seeing his kingdom come don't say I'm addicted it shows in your giving it shows in your time it shows in your service in the house of God don't tell me you are addicted to God when you can be comfortable and come and sit in a ministry for months and years and you are not part of building that house you are not addicted no he says as the deer pants after the water brooks so my soul pants after you it was the psalmist that said this he says Oh Lord, you are my God. He said, early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. Right? To see your power and your glory. Let me tell you something. Many Christians in our generation, we love God. We are born again. But we are too ashamed of our addiction. Addiction. The same way, have you seen someone addicted to, uh, what they call this thing? Indian hemp. The person will not mind coming to meet a small child and say, sir, please give me 10 naira. I have not eaten. He's lying so obviously, but because he cannot help it. If you can still manage your passion for God, you don't love him enough. Oh, let's, let's be real. Let's, let's not act like fools. You are joking. You want power. I'm telling you, you must fall in love with God with all your heart not fall in love with the healing anointing many of us are i you know i pray for people and most times when people come that i pray for them so that they will receive double portion or triple portion or whatever i know they don't love god they even love me more than god i see it in their expression that they only love me because we have taught that you should honor a man you know that they love me more than god you know they love that anointing more than God. Anything above God, even if he gave you, is an idol. Whatever it is, please hear me. Do you love God more than your beauty? Do you love God more than power? Do you love God more than koinonia? Do you love God more than Joshua Selman? That's addiction. Do you love God more than marriage? Do you love God more than, more than whatever it is? All these carnal things that take our time is fall in love with God in a way that nothing in time people get jobs when they lose jobs they backslide what a shame to your passion for God you are in a relationship someone says I will marry you all of a sudden he says I'm not doing and you leave God God I'm angry Aye. Jesus told the disciples he said will you also go and they said to whom shall we go where, where are we going? Leaving you is no longer an option. If you never bless me, I still, I mean, I still owe you my love forever. Please, let me tell you something. If you want power from God, stop seeking God just because of things. Stop seeking God just because of things. Oh Lord, I want your time. I want your hand. And we bend God's hand with fasting and prayer. How many pastors want to see God glorified in their assemblies? Very little. I can tell you this. Many pastors fast. Some of you are like that. Probably you came from somewhere. You are sitting, boiling, waiting for the time of impartation. And God is saying, calm down, not so. So that you will not go back disappointed. God is not a herbalist. There is a protocol to true spiritual power. Addiction. Addiction. Outspoken Christianity outspoken Christianity not the type you off your ringtone because you are in a place that 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 will fall your hand if God falls your hand you are falling I tell you I rather be a doorkeeper the psalmist said I will trade my palace and its honor to serve God forever you will be Forever you will be the Lamb upon the throne, the Lamb upon the throne, and I gladly bow my knee. To worship you alone. MOG. It's time to seek God more than ministry. 
your ministry is distracting you and killing you from God you have carried ministry and put on your head like a luggage that came from demons and you you will afford for your secret place to suffer so that you will fulfill a ministerial schedule I can cancel any ministration for my secret place you know we think being busy is ministry oh today i'm in hawaii tomorrow i'm in dubai next tomorrow i'm in south africa next tomorrow i'm in uk then i'm in Ibom. i'm in london and we think because we are hopping up and down we are doing ministry let me tell you you may be doing all these things but before god you are not doing anything your heart is more important than your voice to god don't think because you are always talking it means god is hearing you no your heart number three let's hurry up i want us to pray what is the third key the baptism of the holy ghost the third key to fire in your life is the baptism of the holy ghost slash prayers so you write it slash prayers that the experience of the baptism of the holy spirit first corinthians chapter 2 verse 7 the baptism of the holy spirit backed up by the ability to pray in tongues fluent tongues now there's no time for me to go into this discussion please don't stop mike don't stop you see this concept of prayer and the concept of the baptism of the holy spirit has been hijacked by satan please listen to me it is not a denominational perspective it has nothing to do with Pentecostalism and charismatism I was never filled with the Holy Ghost in any church there is no pastor no denomination that can claim that it was because I was in the assembly no God did that for me specifically so that I will be able to communicate these truths to people the devil has cheated us and i know many of us is in fear so that we don't get into witchcraft and diabolism i understand and i respect your passion but listen to me if you want power in this kingdom that endowment with power that endowment with power ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost comes upon you acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4 says now when the day of pentecost were fully come he said they were gathered together in one accord verse 2 says suddenly suddenly not gradually the baptism does not happen gradually suddenly are we together suddenly they had a sound that sound as of a mighty rushing wind and the bible says it came and filled the room and then the bible says they saw what looked like cloven tongues as of fire and it rested on each each one of them not some they're not as shared each one of them then the bible says then they began to speak with tongues as the holy ghost gave them utterance they were 120 in the upper room it was such an experience that all the people around that place came and saw the mighty things they were doing and they said these men were drunk with new wine they linked that experience with wine the same way a man drinks beer one bottle two bottles ten bottles at the 11th one is not himself again another influence takes him so when they saw the men, he said, you are behaving like those who have taken this thing. Are we together now? And then in Acts chapter 3, still, well, Acts chapter 2, when Peter finished preaching to them, the Bible says they were caught to the heart. And this is what they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And then he says, repent for the remission of your sins. And then he says, you shall receive this promise for the promise is unto you and your children and your children's children and as many as are far off as many as the lord will call that included us are we together yeah 
In Acts chapter 19 from verse 1 to 4 is the most classic explanation of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Paul, having passed through the upper coast, the Bible says, he came and he found certain disciples. Disciples, they were already born again. Give us Acts please, 19, 1 to 4. They had passed through the upper coast. The Bible says Paul came and found certain disciples. Are we together? And then he asked them a question, verse 2. He says, have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? Meaning it's not the same experience as being born again. Initiated by the same spirit, but they are two separate experiences. Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? And then they replied him, they said, we have not even heard if there be any Holy Ghost. And Paul was surprised. And then he says, unto what then? Were you baptized? He was asking them a question. And they said the baptism of John. Then Paul began to explain to them. He said the baptism of John was a baptism of repentance. That they should believe on the one who was to come. That means it was Jesus Christ. And afterwards, Paul said, the, the Bible says they were now baptized to the name of Jesus Christ. And then Paul laid his hands upon them. And then the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues. Right? They were 12 in number. Have you received the Holy Ghost? Have you received that empowerment since you believed? When you read, let's read from 18. 18, the last five verses, if you can give it to us. Right? The Bible talks about a very intelligent man. Hallelujah. Um, no, not 19, verse 18. 18, Acts 18. Acts 18, please. The last four verses. Acts 18. Media, are you with us? Acts 18. Okay, let's just let's just turn there so we don't waste time. Okay. Now the Bible says. Give us from verse 24. Let's start from 24. Listen to this story. A certain Jew named who? Apollos. And the Bible says Apollos was born at Alexandria. He said he was a man who was mighty in scriptures. He was eloquent. He was an orator. Are we together? And then the Bible says he came to Ephesus. Ephesus is not the place you come and preach nonsense. Is where Paul got his revelation of the highest church truth. There was a goddess called Diana in Ephesus. She was the goddess that controlled that center of economy. So you had to be sound and mighty in scriptures. Now Apollos came. Next verse. 25. He said the man was instructed in the way of the Lord. And was what? Fervent in spirit. Zealous. The Bible says, and he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. But he had a limitation. What was his limitation? Knowing only the baptism of John. He was born again and he knew repentance. Like many people in churches, like many pastors, they are zealous, they love God. But the scope of the understanding of God is the baptism of John. Let's see what happened. One day, he went to a crusade. To impress everybody as usual he says and he began to speak in the synagogue and then there were two strange men in that synagogue there were men who were powerful people of the spirit called Aquila and Priscilla they said when they had him and they they took him with them they said we see zeal in you but you are limited there is a theology that has not been taught to you. We want to upgrade your scope of the understanding of God. The Bible says they took him, hear me. And then they says they expounded to him the way of God. More what? Perfectly. Let's see what he did as a result. Next verse. And when he was disposed and passed to Achaia, the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him. The Bible says who when he was come, he helped them much which believed through grace. Let's see what he did. Next verse. For he mightily convinced the Jews. Now he had an evidence. He didn't just speak to them. In the former verses he was eloquent. Sorry. But now he could convince them 
that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ this was not just Jesus again there was an evidence there was an empowerment listen you must be tired of explanations oh God is this God is that one miracle can answer a thousand questions there is no amount of message you want to preach that will impress men again the internet is full of messages there are all kinds of men of God with perspectives all across Africa all across the world messages are now free what the world needs is a demonstration of power Romans chapter 8 please verse 19 Romans chapter 8 for the earnest expectation of the creator waited for the manifestation not the explanation not the discussion let's see it in the new living translation or the message bible I'm looking for the version that says creation is waiting for the sons to reveal who they truly are there is a version like that 8 verse 19 not 20 8 verse 19 8 verse 19 uh, thank you NLT for creation is what eagerly waiting for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are because the Bible says it does not yet appear they are still looking at us and they think we are like them but there is an activity happening in us the Bible says behold what manner of love the father had bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God are we together the Bible says now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be like we are still in the formation there is still a building Christ is still being formed in us like Paul prayed to the church he said my little children of whom I travel until Christ be formed for when he's done let me tell you he will produce a wonder in our lives first Corinthians 2 verse 7 quickly and then we'll go to the last key and we'll pray first Corinthians 2 verse 7 he says talking about the mystery of this language of the spirit he said no please give it to us um, okay no problem no problem let's just stick it here he says no the wisdom we speak it doesn't make sense but the bible calls it the hidden wisdom God put it like that so that only humble people can walk in it if you are not humble enough to receive that hidden wisdom the Bible says we speak the wisdom we speak of is what the mystery everybody say mystery the same way there is a traditional festival and you see people going around fire and making enchantments and putting fire on their body have you seen that happen and it doesn't burn them they put the fire in their mouth and bring it out they carry knife and put it in their mouth and it enters and brings it out because they are operating on a mystery the bible says to the believer there is a mystery that has been given you it says the mystery of god his plan that was he previously hidden what was it he said even though he made it for our ultimate glory so one secret to your entering the glory is this mystery called tongues when a man locks up himself and begins to pray people say you are just talking nonsense no problem it's the same way you talk nonsense and call it laughter <laughs> and nobody laughs at you it's intelligent in fact people accuse you for not laughing who taught you how to laugh the same way your cry as sarcastic as it looks it compels compassion tongues is also like that don't let anybody tell you you are taught to pray in tongues when you slap a baby Shade, when you gave birth to your child and they slapped the child and the child started crying who taught the child that they cry with the mouth not the eyes it was programmed there listen 
I want you to know that the believer is supernatural. When you remove the supernatural, we are just herbalists. Leaders of, and followers of a religion. Don't remove the supernatural dimension. Hallelujah. Made for our glory. Any man who does not pray cannot reveal the glory of God. There is a relationship between prayer and power. Acts 1 verse 8, you shall receive power. Acts 2 verse 1 to 4, they receive tongues. Jesus didn't say you will receive tongues. He said you receive power. But in Acts chapter 2, they receive tongues. Meaning there is a system that tongues uses to translate and produce power in a man. It was Paul himself that said, I thank my God. I pray in tongues more than ye all. Hallelujah. Luke 18 verse 1, he spake a parable unto them to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5 17, pray without ceasing. It doesn't mean pray from morning till night, you'll be an irresponsible person. It means pray consistently. The Bible says, and the fire upon the altar, it shall never go down day or night. Let me tell you something. Whatever attacks your prayer life has really destroyed your life. It's cheaper for your finances to be attacked than for your prayer life. It's cheaper, as bad as it is, for your health to be attacked than your prayer life. And let me tell you how Satan attacks you. He makes you to resent everybody that can help you. You fight and quarrel them and push them. When you are alone, then he attacks you. Satan never attacks you until he creates an occasion through bitterness, through anger, through fault finding. So everybody that can help you and intercede for you, he cuts you away from them and then he leaves you alone. Solitude is a sign that darkness is close to you. Listen, listen. Excessive solitude, I'm not talking of just retreating to pray. When there is a desire in you to not hear people, to not listen, you are in a world of your own. It's a sign that darkness is close to you. It's a strategy for your destruction. The last key to receiving unction to reveal the glory is called impartation. The mystery of impartation. Transference of grace. Transference of unction. Transference of power. Numbers chapter 27. We'll just look at one example so that we we'll pray. Let's see what transpired between Moses and Joshua. A classic sign of biblical impartation. Numbers 27. Verse 18 to 23. Numbers chapter 27. Please write this scripture down and study it with all your heart. This was God instructing Moses to prepare Joshua for ministry. Are we together? Are you ready? Let's read. One to read. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit, and do what? Lay your hands upon him. That what should happen. Next verse. And set him before Eleazar the priest, and before all the congregation, and give him a charge in their sight. Are we together? And he says, and thou shalt put some of thine honor. Christ. Can you show me where honor is in a man? God said, don't just through impartation transfer your spirit, transfer your honor. I told you honor is not something you fight for. It's a mantle. That all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. There is a mantle that makes men loyal to a grace. It's not by shouting and saying, obey me. There is a mantle. And he shall stand before Eleazar the priest, who shall speak counsel for him, and so on and so forth, and so on and so forth. Now let's see what happened. Deuteronomy chapter 3, chapter 34, verse 9. Just one scripture. Deuteronomy 34. It's still a continuation of this story. Deuteronomy 34, verse 9. 
Let's read together. One, two, read. Uh huh. Was full of the spirit of wisdom. Why? For Moses had what? Laid his hands upon him. And the children of Israel hearkened unto him. Listen. You know why people don't listen to you? Because you are trying to do ministry using seniority. You are trying to do ministry saying, don't disrespect me. There is an unction that compels loyalty. Men are not loyal to a man just because he can preach. They will clap for you. When you see a ministry that can follow a man unto death, brothers and sisters, there is a mystery upon his head. I can tell you, Koinonia has that mystery. Hmm. You see, Ba, there are secrets in this kingdom. There are secrets in this kingdom. The one you can find is the one you will live by. The one you do not know is the one that will chain you forever. God said, I want to honor Joshua, but I will not ignore a vessel who is already carrying it. He said, Moses, it is within your power to put your spirit and your honor upon him. Listen, you can carry a man's grace and the virtue of God upon his life and read. you can trace an anointing and know where it came from are we together you can see a man stand on stage and know that this came from Benny Hinn. this one you can see this prayer fire and know this one came from Duncan Williams this one did not just come from this you can see a prosperity mantle and trace it anointings are like address they can show you where they came from I'm a product of many anointings. The glory revealed through the anointing. The anointing giving you capacity to produce an evidence. An evidence. An evidence. There are different kinds of anointings. There is the power to prosper. Shout it. Say the power to prosper. I want you to shout it like you mean it. Say the power to prosper. This is what many people need to pray for. I'm not against business ideas. I teach you principles. There's financial dominion. But I can tell you there is such a thing as the power to prosper. If you don't have it, I've seen people who have all kinds of business ideas. But the power to prosper is not a business idea. The power to prosper is a grace that compels creation to respond to you in a certain way. Jesus had it. He said, go and you will see a donkey, a colt. No man had written on it. Bring it. The owner could not say no. What kind of grace is that? That's the grace that will make you tell somebody, we need speakers for our program. And he said, take it. That's the grace that will make somebody say, take my car and be using it for this crusade. There is such a grace. Let me tell you something. How you will know the power to prosper is not in your life is that you pay for everything. If you pay for everything, the power to prosper is not. It's not about being a millionaire. The power to prosper is not about being a millionaire. It's about the supernatural speaking in your life. Men are rising to help you when there is trouble. Listen, if you are in trouble and there is no man who can arise to help you, I'm telling you, the power to prosper is not the power for finances. We have reduced it to money. Every time preachers preach, they, they mean the power to give you dollars. Please don't insult God. Money was an idea. By the time that scripture was written, there was no naira, there was no dollar. It's the power that moves you forward. Even if it must raise help us from anywhere. I want you to believe this. By the grace of God, this is how this ministry came. The power to prosper. Listen, please, I don't know how, I don't want you to think money money is part of it if you think money you will be you will think i am saying 
the power to get money to buy watch and suit that's nonsense that's not what i'm talking about to prosper means to do well to prosper means by all means you will excel are we together the pros the power to prosper is the power that moves men to support your interest at the expense of their own interest when you see a man a man who can leave his own assignment and pursue another man's assignment there is power to prosper there that's what God wanted to give us but pastors have told us the power to prosper is the power to buy a nice shoe and you sit down and pray for hours you don't need to be born again to buy a nice shoe you just need to offer value and it will come this is this is not about getting money for sure the power that causes men to move you forward you can have money but do you have helpers you can have money but do you have endorsers you can have money but do you have men that can lift your hand this is the power to prosper say I need the power to prosper the key to suffering in a Christian's life is to ignore the power to prosper believe me you may get a job very soon you'll find out that money does not do everything money is not everything money is very important don't get me wrong but money is not everything there are people today who are in houses that they are not paying the rent that's the power to prosper you can have 500,000 to rent a duplex you can have 2.5 million to rent a duplex that's not necessarily the power to prosper that's good financial acumen good financial intelligence and that's commendable but the power to prosper is that you can leave your house with nothing and return back with miracles because there are men stationed anywhere whether you forget your money or not it doesn't make any difference because there is an unction that sends helpers as at when due that's the power to prosper and if our God is for us then who can never stop us and if our God is for us then what can Help me. The clearest proof of the power to prosper is the ministry of men in your life. The ministry of men in your life. Help us everywhere. Please listen. It's not just intelligence to produce result by yourself. This body is limited. There is too much you can do. There is only so much you can do with this body. Are we together? Yes. See, let me tell you something. If the only job of the power to prosper is to give you money, then Bill Gates can mock the church. Are we together? You know we think all there is to the power to prosper is money. I don't insult any man of God. We have preached this thing. But I'm saying we have limited the power to prosper to money. So those who don't like money just say, no, no, no. I don't like it. To reject the power to prosper is like to cut two of your legs in the spirit. How else will you move? Are we together? The Bible says David was in the cave of Adullam. By himself all of a sudden 400 men that's the power to prosper they came to him in the cave and they said be a leader of the, over us we will hear you and we will walk with you in ancient times you were not rich if you just had money they can come and beat you and kill you and remove your head and carry the gold you were rich if you had people people it was a battle of territory and loyalty but in our generation now, you can be a, a greedy person that just looted from the national treasury and carry money and buy suit and come and deceive us. We know what the power to prosper is. There are people who are rich, but they do not have it. That's why they don't give God the glory. When you suffer for everything, you can't give God the glory. Are we together? You suffer to get a job. You suffer to keep it. You suffer to buy a car. You suffer to change another one. You suffer to get your wife pregnant. Suffering all around. How can you give God the glory? But when you sit down and watch God, God will say, son, I want to embarrass you. Stand still. You have done something that has touched me. Stand still. Hallelujah. 
one time we were coming back from Ekiti and when we were coming back from Ekiti I don't share too much of these testimonies but someone just did a heavy transfer into the ministry's account honestly I don't even know the person I had to ask the protocol people do you know this person help us everywhere not just cash not just kind someone will come and meet you and say there is a property somewhere I could not sleep the Lord said I should bless you power to prosper someone says from today until December I will fuel the generator of koinonia don't even tell apostle that's the power to prosper they make your journey easy by making you lighter you can have the money but you won't sleep because of it let me tell you one of the graces I trust God to release tonight is the power to prosper I'm explaining it to you so that you will believe if it's not in your life you are going to cry this night because some of us it, once you are stranded you are dead there no helper you call and everybody ends your call it's not about hustling it's about Ebenezer the helper of Zion are we together if you don't believe what I'm teaching you I don't know how else to explain it to you are we together there are so many people in Koinonia here preparing for marriage the economy of Nigeria has become so fierce if you don't have the power to prosper you will suffer you can get a job after laboring for years in the university you get a job and someone just says where are you from and you say I'm Yoruba he says you are not Hausa leave the job it just brings in sentiment to cancel your five six seven years of labor that's the world we live in now are we together are you my brother are you a Christian or otherwise are you this are you from the same village not what do you have to give in that world of wickedness you want to move forward you want to plant a church I was not born in Zaria I'm not from Kaduna state you don't go to another man's state and do ministry if you don't have the power to prosper there is loyalty that comes with territory are we together that's why Jesus told the people start from Jerusalem but when you go to a foreign territory brothers and sisters you need the power to prosper that's what our fathers have used and they have opened branches of their ministries in UK in France huh? someone speaks Yoruba and another person interprets in French and the people never leave there is a pastor writing things in France and people would rather stay there and redeem MFM is there moving as if the devil does not exist you will find places where I was I was dedicating a woman's child um, she used to be in Zaria but now she's in France she was in Holland God used us you know and then there was a miracle for her after many years she had a child and she went to different churches the Presbyterian churches there were not dedicating children they didn't collect tithes and they were not dedicating children because the government was sanctioning and I told her I said uh -uh, you mean there's no church around and she said the only living church in this area is redeemed I said redeemed again redeemed again how did you get there now and the pastor there is a Yoruba person come on now power to prosper you enter a land and become indomitable a firm grasp of territories not intimidated by any government they will come and go the mystery keeps you there now they are downsizing workers between now and December a lot will happen I've told us I told us at 1st of January this thing will not go well in terms of the economy I'm not a prophet of doom but I told us there is a mystery of exemption that's why God said this are year of multiplied grace and influence Isaiah 60 verse 1 to 3 it says Gentiles shall come hallelujah if you are looking for a better Nigeria this year I tell you the truth under God you are joking I love Nigeria are we together I'm a very loyal citizen of this nation but this is prophecy 
it's an unfolding of events some things will happen the only thing is that there is an exemption the power to prosper please you, you we, when it's time to pray you will cry it in your life that's what makes you different from unbelievers are we together that's the only condition where you can look at your life and give God glory you say no I know the school fees of my children before I will go to pay it someone has paid it and he will never tell you who he is write it again if you did not write it the ultimate proof that the anointing to prosper is upon your life is the ministry of men the ministry of helpers not just business ideas it takes men to make things happen have you not seen people with ideas and they died with their ideas someone called pastor Tunde Bakare and told him he said I love you and I've invested 200 million in an investment for you it's just growing whenever you need it they can talk to you and he said what for he said I'm okay and the man said no I had to do it you are my pastor Hi. when a man argues with you about blessing you there is such a thing and we are going to pray there are many other anointings the power listen the power to heal the sick there are three I'm going to teach us ah, there's no time let me just go straight to the three that the Lord told me that's number one the power to prosper number two are you ready it's called resurrection power don't claim you know what it is just listen to me resurrection power is about the apex the zenith of a man's manifestation of the anointing what is resurrection the ability to make dead things come back to life is the hallmark of creation are we together let me tell you something there is resurrection power the bible says Ephesians please help us Ephesians 1 verse 17 we are reading down to 20 for this call Paul says for this cause I Paul I bow my knees right to the father of glory that he may give unto you listen the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him next verse the eyes of your understanding being enlightened or flooded with light he said that he may what know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints here it comes verse 19 read it if you're a christian one to go and what is the exceeding greatness of his what power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power what mighty power next verse which he wrought in christ when he what raised him the power that can raise a thing that has died is power indeed the power that can heal what is alive is power but the power that can raise what is dead come on you carry that anointing and enter a lifeless environment and something gives life Isaiah 32 verse 15 we are praying this one scripture and then we we'll stand up and pray let me show you that there is an ability that can bring life to dead things it is called resurrection power brothers and sisters get this anointing and your life will change no matter what it is it's a matter of time and influence upon you read it 32 want to read until the spirit be poured upon us from on high then what happens and the wilderness be counted for a fruitful vine uh -huh. and a fruitful vine be counted for a forest that's the power of resurrection you step into a desert place spirit have your way in us today spirit take your turn as we are changed
restoration together with the power of resurrection and the power to prosper will make you indomitable believe me verse 2 verse 2 and cause me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many bones and they were what? Very dry. Listen, you will step into the life of people with age-long issues. The devil has stolen from them. It's not just that the situation is dead. It was stolen. Then, son of man, verse 3, he says, can these bones live? And he says, only thou no west. Verse 4 This is one key to releasing the anointing and he said unto me prophesy speak Hagar speak command Hagar instruct compel let it be upon these bones and say unto them O ye dry bones who speaks to bones? Who speaks to bones? Dogs eat bones. Men throw bones. God speaks to bones. It says, Hear ye the word of the Lord. And then let's read verse 5. And behold, I will cause bread to enter you. Go to verse 7. So I prophesied not as I wanted, as I was commanded. And there was what? A noise. The same noise in Acts chapter 2 verse 1. There was a sound. And behold, a shaking. And the Bible says, and behold, bones came together. This is not just resurrection. This is restoration. Are we together? We are going to pray. Hold hands together. In the next five minutes, I'd like you to blast in tongues like an angry man who is tapping into power. Lift your voice and pray. Pray like a man, like a woman who is about to take delivery of unction to function. Praise. Rekete poko choma
Alléluia. Alléluia. I like you to look in one minute at your life. See the barriers that have stood before you. Because they are about to be smashed into pieces. Something is about to come upon your life. That will move you forward. Something is about to come upon your life. That will drive you to the next level. Something is about to come upon your life. The power to run. The power to run. The power to run. The power to fly. The power to run. Please lift your hands. Listen, it is not about falling down. Don't be distracted with falling down. Open your spirit and receive something that will change your life. Don't just focus on falling down. The Holy Ghost is doing his thing. But beyond falling down, open up your heart to receive. Children, adults, don't say no. Some people cannot receive. You have a child, stand for them. Don't say they cannot receive. Hallelujah. Paul said, For I long to see you, that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. Lift your hands, I want to pray for you. The glory of God is revealed in a man when there is an anointing. Right now in the name that is above all names. I stand upon this apostolic and prophetic office. And I declare that at the count of three. By the ministry of angels. By the unction. By the ministry of and the mystery that surrounds this office right now at the count of three I declare that this unction fall inside and outside online and everywhere one, two three, take it take it take it right now receive it power receive it Fire Shaka Baba Katana Baba inside the overflows right now, right now, right now. Every row, every row, every column, every row. The thousands following online. I release it upon you. You that are listening in your home, you that are listening in your room. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost in your life, in your ministry, in your business. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power. Take it now. Lift your hand. There is an anointing called the power to prosper. Lift your hands and receive it. I pray for you now. Shaka Paratai. I have seen this in my life. I have seen this in this ministry. 
the ministry of man making your life easy right now in the name of Jesus receive the power to prosper take the power to prosper take the power to prosper in your ministry take the power to prosper in your job the power to prosper in your academics the power to prosper in your business the power to prosper by this anointing every struggle in your life where you labor by yourself for result it comes to an end this night it comes to an end this night number two the power that can quicken things if that same spirit which raised Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body that same spirit will revitalize ay, 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 ay. will revitalize hallelujah the Lord is giving me a sign for many of you to be your right hand I don't know what I'm saying but your right hand in a supernatural way your right hand I see the right hand of many people shaking this is what the Lord is showing me right now that anointing for resurrection all over this auditorium take it now take it now take it now take it now every dead thing come alive come alive talita kumi come alive talita kumi dead academics dead relationships says and I will restore to you the years that the canker worm if you have not lost anything in your life you don't need to pray this prayer if you have not lost anything don't lift your hands don't worry 
but if you are among those who need true restoration you have wasted years time has passed opportunities pass and you need a rapid response listen the bible says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore there is a man who can call forth restoration there is an unction that will restore to you lift your hands not only will God restore he will give you grace to be an agent of restoration therefore right now I pray that unction for restoration according to Ezekiel 37 that sound that wind right now may that sound come upon your life take it now take it now take it now take it now go and restore your family take it now go and restore the fortunes that has been lost take it now go back experience academic restoration now now academic restoration jack back to 2-1 jack back to first class jack back to 2-1 jack back to first class go back and get a job whatever made you lose your job a new job comes by this anointing take it now where you would have been promoted but sentiments kept you not only will you be promoted it must be backdated in the name of Jesus listen you will hear strange testimonies from today's service you will hear men who will come and tell you promotion of 10 years was compressed together and brought there is an anointing for it There are some of you, you would have been richer than the way you are now. You would have been better than the way you are now. But witchcraft kept you. I prophesy to you. I'm not asking you to move forward. I'm asking you to move to where you would have been. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you were supposed to have been married and the devil delayed it and now you are marrying carry twins carry twins carry twins carry triplets carry twins carry triplets i pray for every church here and every ministry that should have grown but you are still stagnated between now and December, triple your number. Triple your number. I speak it prophetically. Triple your number for the sake of the kingdom. I pray for you. Any helper who would have appeared in your life by now, even if, let me tell you something. There is a way your helper can come too late. That what he was supposed to do has destroyed you already but I'm praying for you where one helper should have come I call three to come ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Koinonia, be believers I said where one helper should have come I call three to appear at the same time they should appear at the same time Amen. hallelujah that happened to Saul, the son of Kish. For three days delay, there were three sets of miracles. One, your father's donkey has been found. Two, you will be on your way going. You will meet three men carrying bread. Two of them will give you. Number three, you will come to the garrison of Philistines. Where there are prophets, you will prophesy like them. All in one day, I pray it again. In the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ the son of the living God the king of kings and the lord of lords the doer of miracles the one who can change any man's life if I be a man of God 
and there is God that backs this ministry. I say it again, where one helper would have come, I call three to come into your life. Hallelujah. One last prayer. Moses, lay your hand upon Joshua that the spirit will come upon him. He said, transfer some of your honor to him. I want to pray a dangerous prayer for you. Lift your hands. Many of you may not understand what I'm about to pray for you, but you watch and see what will happen in your life. Honor is a mantle. No man can, you don't lobby for it. It's not a political position. Hallelujah. He says, I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. I want to pray for you. If I tell you I have not seen this grace in my life, I'm lying. It's a grace. It's not just business acumen. There is an anointing. I want you to receive this prayer. It will make your life easy. Where men arise, where God opens your eyes, Many are looking, but you see, I pray for you. Father, Lord God, it is always your desire. It is always, help that lady, please. Your desire that any grace you give a man be distributed to people. It is never your desire to have one man just stand. You use one man to receive but it is for the people. This honor that you have released upon my life is not just for me. It cannot be just for me. I pray in the name of Jesus, I invoke the covenant I have with you in the secret place. And I pray from what you told me in the secret that as I speak, you will confirm it. Right now, oh God, like a mantle, let this honor fall on as many people as desire. Take it right now. Take it right now. Strange honor. Take it right now. Strange results. Take it right now. Inside and outside. Online. Take it right now. Strange results. Strange results. Strange results. Strange results. Before you knock, may the gate open. Before you knock, may the gate open. I lose the loins of kings. I lose the loins of kings. I lose the loins of kings for your sake. I lose the loins of kings for your sake. Listen, the Bible says, I will open before you the two lift gates. He said, they shall not be shut day or night that men may bring unto you the forces of the Gentiles. It says you will suck the breast of kings and in their glory shall you boast yourself where men have deserted you so that no man passes through you. It says I make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. Koinonia as a mantle. Let this be the signature that many will use to know you are a member of this ministry. Honor, honor, on come on honor those outside make sure you are receiving it honor receive it in the name of Jesus hallelujah thank you for lifting thank you for lifting thank you for lifting my Thank you for lifting. 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 Our time is spent. But except for those under the anointing, I'd like us to all stand in one minute. Those under the anointing, just leave them so they don't fall back again. Hallelujah. Those online, those listening, please hear me. 
There are two kinds of altar calls that will be made today. I will merge them in one. Number one, there are those who have never truly committed their lives to Jesus. If you are part of them, before I finish, you can even come. Listen, there are people here. You see, God is not a herbalist, brothers and sisters. I told you his desire is for his love to be revealed. You have seen the mighty acts of God here today. But there are people inside in the first overflow all around and many, the thousands following us online. There are so many people who are yet to surrender. I told you the first key to access the anointing is genuine surrender. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you are here in this category, you know that if the trumpet will sound today, you are not heaven bound. Or number two, you know at a point you gave your life to Jesus Christ, but because of the vicissitudes of life, the pressure of life was upon you and you know right now you are not in right standing with God. Please, our time is gone. We have two minutes to do this. Wherever you are, all the overflows outside, I don't care whether you came with a friend or you came as a family. Jesus is calling you right now. Wherever you are, please run to the front. Come and stand here. God bless you. God bless you. Run like there's fire on the mountain. Those outside, clear the way for them. This is the beginning of a life of victory. It's not compulsory. No man will force you. But let me tell you the truth. You will be doing yourself a mistake. Make your way to the front. Make your way to the front. Coin on your clap for them. Make your way to the front. Jesus is calling you. Jesus is calling you. It's time to be serious with God. No one leg in, one leg out. Make your way to the front. I don't care whether you're a pastor, you're a prophet. Once you know your ways are not right with the Lord Jesus Christ, make your way to the front. Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. Don't let anybody stop you. We're not interested in your face. We're interested in your destiny. There is nothing you have done that is too great or is too big for you to be forgiven. Make your way to the front. Don't let any man condemn you. The devil is a liar. Man of God, you don't know what I've done. I don't want to know. Jesus is ready to save you. Make your way to the front. Make your way to the front. The Holy Ghost is still speaking to people. You must be born again, Jesus said. It's compulsory. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for all of us who came out. Some of us have given our lives to Jesus Christ. Some of us are rededicating our lives properly. Some of us, you have been coming out for several altar calls. You may not know what you have been doing. But today is the day you want to make up your mind. Please lift your hands to heaven. High to the heavens. You are not lifting it to a man. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Please mean it from your heart. You are not reciting a poem. Jesus is right in this place. Lord Jesus, I truly love you. And I believe in you. I believe with all my heart that you died for me. You were buried for me. You rose again for my justification. I declare that you are my savior you are my lord i denounce sin and satan from today i receive eternal life into my spirit i am a child of god i am born again my name is in the lamb's book of life i receive grace to become effective i am planted in the house of god and i flourish as a believer Keep your hands lifted. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, let this be the beginning of great days in your life. Let this be the beginning of a new level in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bless you with the blessings of the kingdom. I bless you with the blessings of this family. Your, the lines have fallen for you in pleasant places and you have a goodly heritage. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. 
God bless you for this great decision. Please, I'd like you to follow the person waving. Where are you? Wave your hands. The lady waving her hands. Please, I'd like you to follow them. They will get your details and I promise you will follow you up. God bless you. Koinonia, honor them. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.